this is Matthew Young with uh, Nicholas Barker, uh, editor of ABC for Book Collectors by John Carter, and uh, recently featured in a uh, in a uh, New Yorker video with with various uh, uh, books booksellers uh, picking out their favorite terms, and uh, I wanted to. To start by just asking you how you took on this project, um, I'm I'm sitting here with the uh, with my sixth edition from the from the 1990s, um, but uh, uh, I, I think it was published first in 1952. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And I started taking a hand in it from the uh, the fourth edition onwards. I think we may have been the third edition. Right. And John Carter died in 1967, I think it is, or 68. And uh, then I, I, I became the sole editor. And it's now in the ninth edition and never been out of print. That's right. That's right. Well, Oak Knoll took it on, I think, in the, in the, in the 90s. Um, uh, yes. And... Uh, it, it's you've kept the dedication that, that John Carter had to John Hayward. Um, well, we kept all. I mean, the book itself yeah. was in part, part a demonstration of what it was actually about. So that when you get things like an entry for end papers, it says it on the end papers. Yes, uh, for for every every facet of the book that you go through, right on right over the folio or or in that location there's a little bracketed thing telling you what page that is in book language exactly uh, exactly and so uh, obviously having had a dedication to one man who was of course the founding editor of the of the book collector which was the magazine i subsequently also edited uh uh, you couldn't alter that because that's what the what what, uh, 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 what John Carter had chosen. And you um, you expanded on some of his terms and uh, added new terminology as it came along. Um, yeah. Well, not as it came along. Usually, as it was always there, but uh, the, the, the it was the trade or something that changed, which made it necessary to have a. I wasn't, I wasn't going to turn it into a universal glossary. There was a perfectly good one, uh, which I think Oak Knoll published, or did they not? The Glaster's Encyclopedia of the Book. It was a very good book, but of course, uh, um, it, we were trying to restrict it to the sort of terms that a, a book collector or librarian might need to use. Yes, right. But it but it does help to clarify terms for people who might who might um, think of terms a little bit differently or uh, or use different terms for the same thing or want to know what the terms mean. Yes, and uh, and especially um, especially in the in the ninth edition when you added uh, when you added illustrations and photo photographs of. Uh, what you were talking about that added a whole a whole other dimension to the book i think yes i think so it was a very good idea on your part to have those colored photographs put in and um along the way you've had you've had uh, some expert help in terms of reading i think terry bellinger and uh and uh tansel and and then most recently simran thadani um Yes, and did a lot of work. So, so there's a lot of expertise that that uh, has gone into this book. Well, I hope so. Yes, and many others, of course. I mean, I used to have a, a very large correspondence, and still occasionally get letters uh, complaining about something being left out or demanding that some new term be put for, put forward. And how how do you handle those? Well, I I, I uh, reply and and when necessary we alter the text. We haven't altered the text since the ninth edition. I, I do notice in the latest edition some uh, some terms that are that are much more modern. I think eBay is in there. Uh, yes, but, uh, 
it, as it was a as it was a, 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 a quite active tool in the book business we thought a, a, a line on it should go in right but but not too much about um, about digital printing or or uh, bindings <laughs> that have come along since um, uh, since the earlier editions uh, that that some scholarly publishers are are using now uh, because you have to print in small quantities and we've actually printed one book digitally only one and that was the one on the history of desktop publishing which is a perfectly appropriate subject but we sort of shied away, shied away from that and, and i think it's it hasn't crept into abc of book collectors book collecting you'll, you'll have to do some more digital publishing won't you well i guess so i don't know i mean that's a decision we have to consider because as we publish as we publish in smaller quantities uh it, it does become a does become a consideration yes i think like you. Um, I, I think some of the digital printing results are are, are quite good um, yes well, i've seen some quite good uh, digital printing yeah what are some of your favorite terms in the book i i was just flipping through and came across uh, ghosting or ghost publishing which uh which I think is a uh, is, is a publication that's announced but never found or never. Uh, a ghost publication uh, uh, is is something that's been alleged to exist, but right. as far as anybody can make out, doesn't exist. Ghost writing, of course, is a very different uh, oh, yeah. thing. Uh, that's where uh, somebody an, an anonymous really lends their work to somebody else's name. Yes, which happens far too often. <laughs> but uh, well, or otherwise, yes. But but ghost uh, the ghost publication stopped me because uh, um, in in my book on on uh, the Leadenhall Press there was a publication I've been trying to find forever uh, called uh, the Cockney Almanac, and I cannot find a copy in any library or collection. Nobody's ever seen it. So it's, it's it's almost a ghost publication. Yes. What was the evidence that it? What was the evidence that suggested that it might exist? Well, it appeared in it appeared in uh, in the um, pub, in the list of publications of the oh, yes. press. Yes. Never believe a list of publications. Right. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I'll I'll take that to heart. Nobody. As, as I think it was Dr. Johnson who said that nobody is to be on oath in memorial inscriptions and and uh, it's still less on publishers advertisements yes well it was either it was either that or it was such an ephemeral thing that that uh, it was published and disappeared but but that, that's, that's very rare very, very unlikely i think yeah um so what do I, tell me about some of the additions in the in the ninth uh, in the ninth edition that that uh, that you felt were very important well i mean a significant thing was the introduction of pictures i i, I can't think of any one uh, a, a, a term uh, that was introduced uh, i mean you you brought up the, the question of uh, ebay which i suppose is is uh, was worth putting in I, 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 it wasn't my idea i can remember it was somebody possibly terry said it should go in um uh, not, but, that it, not that it's a book term it's 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 something other than a book term no uh, 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 but it, it it's it's a, a practice in the book trade which had come into existence uh, well, not since the eighth edition had been going before that but uh, we decided to put it in because it it was now a recognized method of collecting books yes uh, but but the illustrations, yes, um, you know, to be able to see a see a photograph of a four edge painting and and uh, and and the the uh, structure of a binding um, is uh, is I think a, a really valuable addition. I think so. I think so. Anyway, I hope it continues as lively as it does now. Do you think there'll be a tenth edition? Well, I may not live to see it, but it, I think there will be, yes. 
Um, what other projects are you working on these days? I know you keep very well, busy. Uh, 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 being in lockdown, there's not a lot, I, a, a lot, not a lot to to do. At the moment, I'm very busy because uh, my much loved dear old friend Susan Shaw, who ran the type first museum now called the type archive died on the 13th of june and i'm uh, picking up the bits of that it's been uh, quite a, a, a long preoccupation of mine for the last 40 years or so uh, well tell tell me some more about abc of book collecting how did when when you when you took it over how did you handle that well um, I, I, I mean, it was it was a very gradual process. For, 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 to begin with, I just used to help uh, John Carter, um, who had sole charge of the uh, uh, of the operation until he died. Uh, but uh, uh, in the last edition before he died, I think it is, uh, I was actually responsible for putting it together and deciding uh, how much space would be given to any new suggestions that come in and of course when he died then i then i took sole charge of it yes and i think you did you described yourself as as a bibliomite when you started <laughs> well no i didn't no i wasn't oh. a, a bibliomite is technically a bookseller's assistant yes they, they, they were known as the bibliomites uh, and there was a little club of them uh, and I never, I never was in the trade, so I can't claim that distinction. Oh, okay. Um, John, of course, well, he was at uh, um, Simon and Schuster, and and then at no, Sotheby's. No, 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 no. Uh, um, not Simon and Schuster. He he was at, at um, Scribner's. Uh, Scribner's. I'm sorry, Scribner's, and then and then Sotheby's. Yes, that's right. Uh, and and you were you've been in charge of the book collector for i was the editor from 1950 uh from the editor i was from 1965 until uh, 19 i think they say 2016 now 2016, so yes. a, 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 a little over 50 years yeah um and and that's been the book collector has been such a such a wonderful magazine of journal over the years. Well, I hope so, and I hope it'll continue to be so. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's been quite it was quite a long haul. I believe I believe it's known. It's I thought it was a record, but I've since discovered that the uh, the editor of the Bahamas Gleaner, I think it is, was actually an editor for fifty five years. I rather suspect that he had more assistance than I did. I could be wrong, of course. He may have been a single-handed editor, but you—you you were a single-handed editor. I was, yes, yes. yes. I mean, my various various kind friends have helped from time to time, but I, I, I was I was in charge, so to speak, from 1965 to 2016. Hmm. Well, I will be uh, over over the next few days preparing our latest advertisement for the the uh, next issue of the book collector. As we Excellent. we advertise in there every issue. Um, Very good. We have enough books, I'm sure. We do. Well, I think maybe we can call this a, a short interview. And, and Very uh, good. Well, if, now that we've discovered how to make it work, if there's anything any larger subject you want to tackle, give me notice and I'll try and oblige. Let's do that. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. All the very best, Matthew. Bye-bye, okay. Nicholas.